Yes guys and welcome back guys for a brand new video guys on my channel guys and yes guys I'm going to be talking about Manchester United's last game that we went and played. Everton guys at home at Old Trafford guys and yes guys it ended in a 2-0 victory, a comfortable 2-0 victory for Manchester United. A very dominant display from Manchester United, a very poor Everton side that you would not not expect from a Sean Dyche team. Overall I thought we were fantastic, we got a well deserved win and games like this you've got to win as well if we want to have any chance of getting top four and also getting champions league for next season but anyway guys let's get straight into today's video we made three changes from last game against brentford talking about starting over so we started with Juan Bissaka, maguire martinez malasia mctominay fernandez Sabitza, Anthony, Sancho and Rashford. Get into the overall reaction now. McTominay and Martial boost my United CL hopes. My United have done the double on Everton. Yes, get in. Fantastic win. Massive three points. United were dominant from start to finish. What a win. What a result. A well-deserved win. A win is a win. We did what we had to do. De Gea had nothing to do. Best 45 minutes I've seen us play this season. It was an okay start for United. Good pressure on the front foot. We were aggressive, ruthless, relentless and sustained our attacks. Every time we went forward, we looked dangerous and a threat. Big chance for Rashford should have scored for 1-0. United's midfield getting in behind the two centre-backs. Juan Bissaka missed an open goal. The game was opening up a bit end-to-end. -end. Anthony had a big chance. We're creating the chances but can't take them. Pressing Everton high up the pitch, making runs in from behind. Good build-up play, good link-up play. It's been coming, but someone has scores for 1-0. United have controlled and dominated the game. Positive attacks and creating chance after chance. It was a better start for Everton in the second half. United getting into some good positions, giving away possession too easily. Everton putting United under pressure. Big chance for Bruno. Another big chance for Wamba Saka. United took the foot off the pedal a bit. Martial scores for 2-0. Game set and match. United showed great passion, desire, hunger, attitude, determination, commitment and work rate. United taking more control of the game. Ten Hag made some substitutions. Everton getting frustrated. United were a lot more comfortable. Game management and decision making was vital. Some fantastic individual performances. Let's take it one game at a time. Win done. Three points done. Clean sheet done. First half was brilliant. Second half was good. Overall fantastic performance. What did I make of the performance? I thought it was a fantastic performance overall from Manchester United in these certain games against Everton. You have to win these sort of games, it's a must win. And against Everton, it was always going to be a difficult game. Everton always like to, uh, you know, definitely play as hard as they can against uh, teams as well, especially when they're in a relegation fight as well. Obviously, it didn't. Obviously, um, Everton have. Obviously, Everton got a really good draw against Tottenham, so it was a case of the fact that United had to uh, be ready for a game like this against Everton. I think Everton, I, I mean, Sean Dyche's teams uh, go into games for straight teams, and you didn't see that again. You didn't see that with Everton. I think Everton were just completely frustrated uh, and disappointed the fact that they've not walked away any uh, not walked away from anything from Old Trafford so and you don't see that from Sean Dyche's teams and get absolutely bullied so but they got bullied though Everton unfortunately I have to say it um even though you whoever's watching so at the end of the day I thought it was a fantastic performance by the players a much needed win you've got to win games like this uh, it was a must win uh, we got a great clean sheet as well uh, against a very good side in uh, Everton. We've done the double on Everton this season, which is always nice uh, against another uh, Lancashire team. So at the end of the day, it was a good result for Manchester United. Uh, massive three points were dominant from start to finish. And um, yeah, I mean, great result, uh, well-deserved win. And uh, yeah, I thought it was the best. 45 minutes I've seen us play this season and um, yeah we've got every, we've maximised everything out of the team we've got everything out of the team we played well from start to finish we turned up as well and um, we got a well deserved win and uh, we got uh, and the result showed in the scoreline so we have to take it one game at a time now you know we've got some bigger tests coming up along the way so we have to recover well and uh, go again in the next game. So, yeah, uh, getting into the game now, I thought, um, you know, I thought it was an OK start by Manchester United. I thought we were on the front foot. 
uh, early doors. I thought we play with it with the energy, uh, brought the intensity, the tempo, the intent. Uh, I liked how United were a lot more direct in this game as well. Uh, you know, very direct in our play as well, uh, which made Everton a, a bit more uncomfortable at times, defensively un uncomfortable as well. So I thought. That was a job well done from Ten Hag and his backroom staff to be a lot more direct in a game like this against Everton. But I thought we were, we showed that uh, aggression. Uh, we were ruthless, relentless. Uh, we sustained our attacks. Um, we um, had, had had some positive attacks. Um, we were creating loads of chances. You know, Rashford had a one on one with Pickford. Uh, should have been one nil. Wan Bissaka missed an open goal. Should have been 2-0. Anthony had a great chance to make it 3-0. Again, hits the post. So, I think we're unlucky because that game, we should have been at least 4-0 up in that first half, uh, for sure. Uh, it could have been at least 6-0. So, and if it wasn't for Pickford, they wouldn't have... Uh, and if it wasn't for Pickford, I de definitely for sure they would have conceded 6 in a game like that. And... Uh, the way how we played and, you know, every time we went forward, uh, you know, we looked dangerous and, and a threat as well. A handful to deal with as well. But United obviously, uh, you know, got in, be in behind the two centre-backs as well. Uh, and I thought, you know, when Everton had possession, it was a a down to how effective they could be as well. In a game like this for Everton, it knew it was going to be tough for them to go away at Old Trafford and get a result. So... Uh, I think Everton, you know, had a, only had one chance and didn't really trouble Dyer. Uh, Sims had a chance and, you know, just sort of scuffed it and just, yeah, it wasn't the best of chances for Everton. But, uh, yeah, uh, but yeah, I thought the game opened up a little bit. But, you know, we were creating these chances, but we were just not, being, we were just not clinical. We were not taking them. And I think as... Uh, as long uh, uh, and then the, as as the game progressed on, it was gonna come become frustrating for United if we couldn't take these chances. And obviously, we we had to be be able to score that first goal, as well, uh, before half time as well. But then I thought we're pressing Everton high up the pitch, uh, we're making runs in from behind as well. Uh, but it was I thought it was a very good build up play from Manchester United, good link up play as well. Uh, and then it had been coming for the whole game and Metzomino goes and gets the deserved goal for 1-0. Um, but I thought United absolutely controlled and dominated that game from start to finish. Uh, dominant uh, display from Manchester United. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, positive attacks, uh, creating chances after chance. But we were just unlucky. Uh, definitely for sure that game was 6-0 written all over it. Uh, if we want to talk about our chances. But in the second half, I thought Everton had a, a, a slight better start from Manchester United. United had a bit of a, a slower se second half. But uh, I still thought, considering that you didn't, we didn't have a great start, I thought United were getting into some very good positions on the pitch uh, to cause Ever uh, cause Everton problems. Uh, you know, But then United were just making a little, a few mistakes, giving possession away too easily. Uh you know, Everton were putting United under uh, United under pressure. You know, they didn't really, they didn't create any chances. Everton, they just put United under pressure a little bit, a wee bit. I think they had maybe one or two opportunities, wasteful opportunities that led to nothing. Um, and then uh, you know, but then Bruno had a big chance as well. Uh, another big chance for Bruno, a headed chance uh, to make it two 0 Could have been it. Could have been seven 0 for sure. And then, uh, you know, and then again, you know, another big chance for Wan Bissaka as well. So, yeah, it could have been even more. And this would have been a game, a good, uh, that would have been the game to get the goal difference up. And it's just unfortunate that, you know, the goals were not going in. And I think if it was a different goalkeeper, if it wasn't for Bickford, definitely the goals would have gone in. And then uh, United just sort of took the foot off the pedal a, a, a little bit. But then out of nothing, then United just... Uh, you know, out of nothing, then Martial uh, scores for 2 0, which was game set and match as well. Um, and uh, it was nice to see Martial get back on to the score sheet as well. But United showed, but in this game, though, I thought United showed great passion, 
great desire, great attitude, great determination, great commitment, and the work rate uh, and the work rate had showed on the work ethic as well. And then United, you know, that was where Ericsson came on, controlled the midfield a, a lot more better. Uh, Ten Hag made some substitutions as well, and then that was where United just took full control again, dominant again. Everton tried to get back into the game. Everton just got frustrated. And then, you know, United were, were a lot more comfortable. And then it was all down to, you know, we were, uh, all down to how we see out the game. And I thought game management and decision-making was vital. So, uh, but yeah, I thought there were some fantastic individual performances. But um, let's take it one game at a time now. Uh, we've got loads of games coming up, so we have to recover quickly and um, get back into Carrington and let's uh, go into the next game with uh, high spirits and let's go and win the next game against Nottingham Forest away from home. Another tough one, but uh, I think we can still beat a team in Nottingham Forest. Overall, in the end, it was a fantastic performance. We created several chances. We should have scored more goals, but in games against Everton, it's important that we got the win, three points and also a clean sheet. Yeah, exactly. I think annoying for Manchester United because I think in a game like this, Wabasaka had two chances and Bruno had a chance in the second half. So this game could have been at least seven or eight nil written all over it. It's frustrating for United because we were a lot more direct in this game and we frustrated Everton. An Everton side that you don't really get to see a lot where they get dominated by teams like that. And Sean Dyche's team's definitely dominated like that I think to do that against a Sean Dyche team is fantastic and I think he was a bit shocked and surprised what he saw as well and a bit stunned as well you can't do anything about it when a team's a lot more direct in their play putting the ball out wide putting in some fantastic balls in in from behind players getting into some great pockets of spaces in explosive a lot more fluent as well in our play showed that fluidity all about us as well in that game as well it's frustrating because we had some positive attacks we were creating chance after chance after chance after chance and they were just not falling in the goal but that would have been the game to get our goal difference up it's a shame because Pickford saved them several times if it wasn't for Pickford it could have been a heavy scoreline in all in all in games like this against Everton you have to the must wins you have to pick up the three points massive three points for top four you have to keep putting the pressure on and we have to keep dipping away and keep doing our job in games like this it's important win three points and another clean sheet for David Dyer, who's facing the golden glove on 13 clean sheets this season let's keep it going we're now missing Marcus Rashford for a few games due to a groin injury but it was great to see Anthony Martial come back and get on the score sheet straight away. I think it's fantastic for Martial to get back on the score sheet. Obviously, it's important as well for Martial's confidence as well. Obviously, we need to try and manage Martial now because Martial's another one that can't stay fit. Ten Hag has to really protect Martial as much as he can. So it's all about squad rotation. It's not easy when we've got several players out injured as well with Rashford getting injured in this one. It's not easy to deal with injuries and it's setbacks as well for Manchester United. We could deal with these sort of players and these big games and big moments as well. But it's brilliant for Anthony Martial to get come back and get on the score sheet straight away. It gives him that confidence and it gives him that momentum to go and score another goal. Nice to see Martial back, get straight back on the score sheet. Now it's all about we have to manage him now properly. We have to get it right with Martial, keep him fit now from now to the end of the season because he could be a big part now of the squad to the end of the season for sure. Who is my man of the match? I thought there were some players that stood out fantastically well in a game like this. I thought De Gea had nothing to do in a game like this. I thought Juan Bissaka had a good game. A shame that he didn't score two goals. I thought Maguire had a good game as well. I thought Martinez was good. Malassia was good. I thought McTominay had another great game, scored as well. Fernandez as well, a great game. For Anthony, had a great game, should have scored a goal. Sabitza was good. I thought Sancho was good, a lot more fluent as well, got into some good pockets of spaces as well. And Rashford was okay. I think the two players that I'm going to give this to is Bruno Fernandez and I'm going to give this a bit so two players that really stood out in a game like this both stood out they were both fantastic from start to finish got some great balls in from behind we were a lot more direct in a game like this against Edmonton we were fantastic all round I'd have to give it Bruno a bit so how do we beat Nottingham Forest now obviously coming to this next game now against Nottingham Forest in games like this against Forest you know the must wins you have to pick up the three points uh, obviously Forest are really struggling at the moment as well the winless at nine games really struggling this team now um, you know I think this is a team that will be there for the taking defensively vulnerable 
conceding goals left, right and centre, you know, def uh, you know, got battling with injuries as well, so it doesn't help that, their situation as well. So Forest are really struggling at the minute, you know, with players as well. So uh, I think, well, we're, we've got the same problem uh, after just uh, getting a draw against Sevilla. So I think, you know, coming against Forest, this is, you know, you've got to say to these players, you know, without a doubt, we have to pick up the three points and uh, whatever you do, just win this game against Forest because this is a team that's massively, not only just the managers under pressure, but this is a team that's 18th in the league and this is a team that's struggling to score goals and, uh, you know, they're winless in nine games. But I, f I still think it could be a slight difficult game against, uh, against Forest. I do believe that because I think Forest is a tough place to go to go and get a result. But I think now that it's sort of seen that as the season's progressed and I think that's sort of been founded out eventually as the season's progressed on. Forest and not uh, have have only won have only won one game away from home this season. And uh, you know, they've only lost four games at home this season, so they have a better they have a better uh, the form their form's a bit better at home, but United have beaten this Forest side three times already. Uh, we had them twice in the Carabao Cup, beat them twice in the Carabao Cup, beat them what, uh, in the Premier League, 3-0. So this is a chance for Manchester United to go and do the double on Nottingham Forest. This Forest, uh, this Forest side are really struggling. This is a team that's going to be there for the taking on Sunday. And it's all down to what we do in terms of in and out of possession and how effective we can be and how we can really go and hurt that Forest team. So I think Forest are going to be there for the taking. I think they're just going to try and play with a low block. And when uh, and then when they get possession, it's all about what they can do going forward and making those right decisions going forward. So it depends on how how they try to set up Forest in a game like this, whether if they go with a back three. But with, with the numbers at the minute that they're struggling with, I don't think they'll go with a back three. So they'll probably be forced to go with the back four. And then maybe, and then they'll try and get you know Brendan Johnson and maybe Gibbs White into uh, in the pockets uh, as well. So I think um, another big game for Manchester United, and uh, you know this is a game that we have to win. We've got to turn up to. We have to perform well for a full ninety minutes. And I think you know as as long as we keep up those good energy levels. We have to keep, get the right mentality, the right mindset. We've got to stay concentrated and focused against Nottingham Forest. It's all up here in a game like this as well. So we have to prepare well for a game against Forest. Uh, it could it could get a bit physical at times against Forest, but Forest they're not not been great. So I think defensively we have to be able to keep it tight and compact, frustrate them as much as we can. And um, I think the one thing for Manchester United is. is don't concede, don't concede, keep a clean sheet in a game like this as well and, you know, make sure, have it as comfortable as comfortable as you can in a game like this as well against Forest. So, another big game, but we don't want to take it lightly. We want to make a statement against Forest here and let's get the job done against Forest. But Forest, you know, they're struggling to score goals, they're winless in nine games, they've got injuries themselves. Their fans will be the 12th man. It's a tough place to go. Defensively vulnerable. Steve Cooper under pressure as well. But they'll be there for the taking. It'll be their FA Cup final. They'll give it everything that they've got. They'll be organised. They'll be well drilled. They'll try and keep it tight and compact. Be organised. They'll play with a low block. Look to counter-attack us. When they get their moments, they'll look to take them. They'll, they'll give us a physical game. Make it. Uh, and then they'll try and make the right decisions going forward. They'll try to be brave, take risks and play with width as well. But United need to be able to defend properly. Defensively, we need to be organised, keep it tight and compact. Defensively, frustrate them. They need to be ruthless, relentless, aggressive, high intensity, high tempo, play with energy, create the chances, take your chances, be clinical, get the crosses into the box, drag them out of position, be brave, take risks, set pieces, could come into play. We need to play with whip, get between the lines, got to close them down, but don't, don't let them back in the game. 
Don't leave any spaces open. They'll show incredible team spirit, character and fight. We've got to do the basics right. Game management and decision making will be vital in a game like this. But we've got to get tight. Don't let them get a shot off. Sustain our attacks. Do the basics. Win your 50-50s. Win your second balls and win your duels. Put them, under, put them on the back foot, keep possession, full backs have got to be effective, force them to make mistakes, put them under pressure, don't let their wingers cut back inside, don't afford to make mistakes, make the runs in from behind, don't get pulled out of position, be explosive, and keep AOE quiet. Going to the goal style, first goal, McTominay pass the ball to Rashford, Rashford trying to find a space to shoot, Rashford pass the ball to Sancho, Sancho finds McTominay and McTominay scores for 1-0. Second goal, Martinez goes long to Rashford. Coleman makes a mistake. Rashford capitalises on Coleman's mistake. Pass the ball to Martial and Martial taps it in for 2 0. Get into the stats. Possession for Man United it was at 63.8%. For Everton it was 36.2%. Goals for Man United it was 2. And for Everton it was 0. Total shots for Man United it was 29. And for Everton it was 15. Pass on target for Man United it was 11. And for Everton it was 1. Shot accuracy for Man United it was 37.9%. And for Everton it was 6.7%. Shots in Salah Box for Man United it was 20 for Everton it was 9 shouts out for the box for Man United it was 9 for Everton it was 6 total passes for Man United it was 614 passes and for Everton it was 331 passes pass accuracy for Man United it was 87.1% and for Everton it was 71.3% getting to the substitutions now Anthony went off for Martial talk about Anthony's performance another creative performance it hit the post and he was denied by Jordan Pickford but also wasted two good opportunities harshly removed for Anthony Martial the bits that went off a of thread talk about Martial's performance performance thrived in an advanced role United benefited from some bits of pressing and he was a goal threat found Fernandez for a fine chance Sancho went off for Ericsson talking about Jayden's performance did well to find McTominay to put United 1-0 up but did not make the most of it in his favoured role against an aging Seamus Coleman Rashford went off for Martial talking about Marcus's performance could have sparked a goal got with an 8 minute 1-1 one -on -one. he struck too close to Pickford had other chances but did not score assisted Martial next up we've got Forest. Forest, the 18th in the league go into this game now against Forest. this is a game for Manchester United and I just said this before we've got to win this game and we have to get the 3 points and whatever we do against Forest here we've got to be able to play well for a full night at Minutes. We have to be able to defend well as well. We've just seen what's bloody happened on Thursday night as well. And it's all down to what we do in and out of possession. I'm not worried about the midfield. It's just there's slight things with Manchester United that we are trying to improve this team at the minute. But a few things that we need to get better in, we have to be able to build on that as well. I think with Forest, this is a game where we've got to go right. Forest now on the weekend. Forest are absolutely struggling. But their manager's under pressure. They'll be there for the taking. What they're going to do is, is they're just going to play with a low block would go with a back five they'll just go with a low block frustrate Manchester United as much as they can and then what they'll do is, is when they've got possession they're just going to work it they're just going to put the ball around they're going to keep passing it they'll have their wingers in, in pockets of spaces to be explosive and try and get us on the counter and then it's all down to how well they can do that going forwards and how they can pick out those passes to their guy is the fact that United have got to be able to defend well not only just as a team but as a unit as well it's going to be important that we try and get hold of that midfield against Nottingham Forest Casemiro's back for this one so I think Casemiro's going to run this midfield definitely for sure it's down to how well we can control that midfield for Manchester United though we have to come out quick against a team like Nottingham Forest they're going to try have a good start to this game Forest it's the fact that we need to get on the front foot early doors and score that first goal in the first sort of 20 minutes or so their fans are going to get right behind them they're going to try and make it as hard as they can Forest against Manchester United they're going to give it everything that they've got it's all down to what we do so we have to be able to turn up to a game like this we've got to perform well for a full 90 minutes we've got to prepare well for a game like this could get a bit competitive and it could get a bit we might get a bit of end-to-end -end action as well we have to go with the right mindset the right mentality prepare well for a game like this in Nottingham Forest. They're a good team, but it's just unfortunate that they just don't have the quality. They'll be there for the take in Nottingham Forest. I just think we're united. We need to be able to get that first goal as soon as we can. It's all about we have to be clinical, take our chances. When we get that first goal, we want to try and get that second goal. And then maybe when they get that second goal, heal the game off. They've got no way of going back into the game. And their defence is shockingly bad at the minute. It's defensively a mess. We've got to get at them. They'll be there for the taking in Nottingham Forest. I can guarantee you this team will be there for the taking on Sunday. They'll be there for the taking. Just keep grafting at them. Just keep putting them under pressure. When you keep putting them under pressure, they'll make mistakes eventually. And then 
their goalkeeper won't be able to deal with their defence. It doesn't help Navas because he doesn't have a great defence in front of him. It's the fact that we have to take our chances when we can and we've got to be clinical in front of goal as well. Come on boys, this is your chance now. Top four is a must. This is a must win game. Got to get the three points here. Perform well for full 90 minutes. Get the fucking job done against these lot. We've got a player of courage, intent, conviction and we've got to turn up. Forest are scoring 0.8 goals per game. Forest are conceding 1.8 goals per game. The thing is as well, this Forest side are struggling to score goals. I'll tell you now, this Nottingham Forest team are struggling to score goals. Do not make them look good on Sunday. Do not make them look them good. And don't give away cheap goals as well. So it's all about stay concentrated and focused up here as well. And don't take your eye off the ball in a game like this against Forest. Forest have the third worst defence in their league. Forest have won six, drawn nine and lost 15. They've lost to Newcastle 2-0, Tottenham 2-0. Man City 6-0, Bournemouth 3-2, Fulham 3-2, Leicester 4-0, Wolves 1-0, Arsenal 5-0, Man United 3-0, Fulham 2-0, West Ham 4-0, Tottenham 3-1, Newcastle 2-1, Leeds 2-1 and Villa 2-0. And it's also a chance for Manchester United to do the double on Forest. Forest have lost four games at home this season. Nottingham Forest are winless in nine games. The players to look out for is Navas, Cook, Worrell, Williams, Toffolo, McKenna, Felipe, London. Mangala, Shelvey, Colback, Gibbs White, Lingard, Cafu, Kuate, Yates, Fela, Danilo, Scarpa, Awoni, Surridge, Johnson, Dennis, and Ayu. Hope you guys enjoyed another video. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe to my channel for all new, and I'll see you guys in the video in the next couple of days. And peace.